How have you seen it so far? Oh, outstanding. Um, the boys have really bought in magnificently. Their attitude to training and their courtesy values of stand have stood them in really good stead. If they can't make training due to work or illness or whatnot, they've certainly been on the front foot of that so we know exactly where the group's at. We've tried to monitor their loads the best we can, understanding that a lot of the clubs are still training Monday night, so we've done that. Um, but the session tonight was fantastic. Good hour, good solid brand session. Uh, ball movement was great. Understanding of how we want to enter our Ford 50. And more importantly, the blokes are really buying into each other. Uh, there's an element of trust already, and it's perme permeating through the group. Well, one thing I noticed is between the first and the third session, there's a lot more banter between guys that aren't teammates now. They seem a bit more comfortable. Have you been picking up uh, some good signs in that respect? Oh, we basically sold it. You have to try to formulate the team ethos right from night one. And to their credit, they've really tried to embrace that aspect of the camaraderie that's needed to probably transform the element of trust in a game of footy. Um, let's face it, no matter what level you play, that element has to exist. And it has to coexist with your own ability uh, in the view that we want to get the best team we can on the park as best we can. But we also understand that uniformity is one of our themes going into this uh, campaign that we must have a team first attitude. And once we do things well, we want to generate the right enthusiasm and that's why that band is there tonight. The best trainer award, that was an initiative that, that you really kicked off so that the players would bring a real competitive intensity to training. Um, since introducing it last week and this week, how have you found the, sort of the approach that players have taken and do you feel as though it has proved the, uh, the incentive that you hoped it would? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's about enhancing the experience. Now, we know that we picked a squad initially of 41 and because of attrition, because of work, because of being overseas, we haven't got the full combination of those players available uh, on a week-to-week -week basis and there's some, because of their work commitments, just can't commit to the cause. So we accept that, uh, but those that have, we want to make sure they enhance by the experience in the view that in 12 months' time they've really enjoyed that experience. They mightn't make the final 24 and let's face it, 32 that's left don't go into 24. That's a hard decision we've got to make and we're prepared to make them. But at the end of the day, those eight or so that don't make it, they want to come door knocking next year to be a part of next year's campaign because we don't want it to be a one-year wonder. We want to make sure that EDFL footy is alive and well and the only way to get probably respect in the outside world is not to do what we did last year and get humiliated on the scoreboard against the Northern League. We've got a chance to do something about it in the short term and that's against the Southern Footy League, which starts in you know, four training sessions time plus the 28th of March. It was all about how much do they want to do it. And from what I've witnessed and the match committee have witnessed over the last four training sessions, they're really involved in the concept of representing their competition. And as I've said to you previously, Teo, we as a competition, whether you're coaches or players, have got an obligation to uphold your end of the bargain when you've got a product to sell. And let's face it, we've got a pretty good product to sell, but we need our best to sell it. And that's why these guys uh, need to be applauded by the way they've gone about their training, but also the buy-in factor they've produced. So full congratulations must go to the players.